Richard Dawkins is a familiar name in science. In a string of best-selling books, The Selfish Gene, The Blind Watchmaker, and recently, Climbing Mountain Probable, he has changed the way we think about evolution. This year, he became Oxford's first professor in the public understanding of science. And now, he wants to change the way we think about science. This is a very heavy ball. It's heavier than a real cannonball because it's made of solid lead. It's ten times as heavy as a human head. Now what I want you to do, stand back against this post, hold it against your nose, let go and then stand in the same place. And because of Newton's laws and the law of conservation of energy, you can guarantee that that ball will stop short of your nose and not hurt you. Now, are there any volunteers to do the experiment? Okay, I'll have to do it myself. The problem is that science is not a natural part of our lives. We should all know that there's no danger in that experiment. We should know the science that tells us so. But obviously not all of us do. So my purpose in this program is to show why science should become an integral part of all our lives. I hope to show you the dangers we face when we turn our back on science and embrace anti-science. <laughs> and the risks we run if we don't understand what science can do. A good place for me to start is with the beginning of everything. There is still a lot we don't know about the origins of the universe, and we must keep investigating. But a broad picture of the evolution of life has emerged, which is no longer open to reasonable doubt. The world is about four and a half billion years old. Pretty soon, well within the first billion years or so, the first living cell arose. And from that we are all descended, all plants, all animals, all humans. That's an established fact. We're all cousins. Scientists accept it just as they accept that the world is round and not flat and it orbits the Sun and not the other way around. Not to believe it would be absurd. <laughs> 